Previously on the bill. Ah, oh, Well done, girls. Yeah. Have those officers been drinking on duty? Wait till Inspector Gold hears about this. Oh, she already knows. She was with them. I know she's here. They've got her. They're hurting her. Okay, sir. Just try and stay calm. I want them out. All right, sir. Now, come on. No. Get back. All right, sir, I now. want come you. On. Get no. back. Get back. Bring your nana around. Okay, that's enough. All right, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> They said he's been here about half an hour and wouldn't leave. When they asked him what the matter was, he kicked up a riot fuss, telling him to get out of their house. I mean, he doesn't even live here. Well, who's this Lizzie that you're shouting on about? I ain't got a clue. Just sounds like another care in a community wasting our time. Oh, you should never jump to conclusions. He's threatening an officer with a spade. Makes him a nut job in my book. The income tax that nut job has contributed all his working life has paid for your education, PC Casper. Not money well spent, if you ask me. Mum. Right, you got a name and address? Well, no, but I managed to have a look in his wallet. Now, there's no address, but the name on his cash card is John Towner. All right, well, get him down to the station. We sort him out there. Go on, I'll go and Mom. sort this lot out. Come on, sir. Here we are. Let's go. That's it. I know he should have been drinking on duty, but it was five minutes before the end of shift. But anyway, it'd been a killer day. We deserve a treat. Never thought I'd see Inspector Gold coughing up for a drink, though. Good on her, I say. Yeah, I hope she gives me a shot next time she's getting around him. Wait, you look got nothing better to do. On her way, sir. Uh, hang on. JT's just phoned in sick. You can cover the front office. I'm sure you two have got plenty to do to keep yourselves occupied. Sarge. So stop gassing and get on with it. She thinks up with him. Time of the month. Oh, June. I quit word about last night. You know, That's they right. had had the bet, and the girls had won, and I just wanted to treat them. Yeah, I know. I look, can you do us a favour and just keep it between ourselves? The superintendent already knows. What? Yeah. You told her? No, honestly, it wasn't like that. Thank you very much, June. Thank you. I owe you one. I thought we could all use these. Mm. Well done, Reg. PC Hollis tells me that you used to live in that house where we found you this morning. 38 years. Well, why did you leave? It looked a lovely place. Ah, uh, couldn't afford to run it. But once my wife died, it was just me rattling around in that, so I moved in with the mate. Where's that? Try it. Take your time. I should know. I, I do know. Well, um, what's your mate's name? I should know. Excuse me, Mom. Can I have a word? John, I'll be two minutes. All right? No, I've been on to the bank. <laughs> They gave me his number and address. That's it. The mate he lives with has been worried sick. Apparently, Grandad's been missing since the early hours of this morning. All right. Let's get him out. Vince Garrison and Pete Larson have had a major fallout. And when did this happen? A few days ago. Garrison moving on to pastures new, then? Well, I don't think he'll be leaving his patch just yet. According to my source, he's staying put. That's a bit risky, isn't it? Setting up on his own and going up against his old boss. Well, he's got to pay his rent somehow. On the upside, his going solo may be beneficial to us. What do you mean? Well, if Garrison is keen to prove himself, show last he doesn't need him. He's not going to waste any time before he gets down to business. So you think he's worth keeping an eye on? Well, I think a bit of intelligence gathering might not hurt. And if Garrison thinks we have something on him, he may be willing to dish that out on Larson. Well, let's wait and see. For now, let's take it one step at a time. The important thing is, we play this above board. All right, anything we do find, we'll give to NCS. OK. Get your camera, let's pay Garrison a visit. Here we are. Now, 
You go into the lounge, sit yourself down before you get into any more trouble. <laughs> That's it. I take it this ain't the first time it's happened. I mean, he's always going walk about. It's the first time he's been gone for so long though. And to be honest, it's the first time I've been really worried about him. Well, what's different about this time round? There was no reasoning with him. It's in one ear, out the other. It's as if he can't hear. He can't listen to me. All right, Vicky, go and you sit down. I'll do with this. Yeah. Uh, that one yours? That's it, the tar. John was telling me that the two of you have been living together for quite some time. His Lizzie died. And then a few years later, my Josie joined her. Well, seems silly us running two houses, paying two sets of bills, so... You joined forces. Good on you. What'll happen to him? Well, I've talked to the householders and they've agreed not to take it any further, as long as the damage is paid for. If I'll give you the money, could you pass it on? How long has he been like this? It's about a year. He gets these what the doctor calls episodes. He's fine sometimes, and then he can come across as a bit, I don't know, aggressive. But he isn't really. He just gets confused, scared. And the worst thing is, he knows it's happening. He knows he's losing it, and there's nothing he can do. There's nothing anyone can do. See nothing else we can do for him, Mum. Careful, PC Casper, in danger of developing a conscience there. We can remind social services that they're still in need of help and hope that they can sort it. It's not much, is it? No, but that's all we can do. Come and get in. Yeah, Oscar, one for the yeah, Go ahead, Dean. Superintendent Prosser would like to see you immediately, Mum. She is aware that I'm dealing with an incident, and she? She is, Mum. Thank you. I'm on my way. <sighs> can I move on? It was letting off a bit of steam. Nothing more, nothing less. I beg to differ. I think it was totally inappropriate behaviour, Inspector. Four officers, one of whom is still on probation, encouraged to drink whilst on duty. Well, let's keep this in perspective, ma'am. It was one drink, five minutes before the end of the shift. One drink, in uniform, whilst on duty, in public, in the company of a senior officer who should have known better. How's that for perspective? Well, it was a spur of the moment thing. A bit of team building. I thought it would be good for the troops. My mistake. All I can do is apologise and assure you that it will never happen again. Really? Really. It's never happened in the past and it will not happen in the future. I found this in your desk drawer. You're going through my office now. Do you have a problem, Gina? I mean, something you want to talk to me about? No. No, I do not have a problem and I resent the implication. That was given to me by a colleague some time ago and only ever consumed after work and then only after a particularly tough day. And how many of them do you have, Gina? How many tough days in your week? Because I have a tough day every day of the week, but I don't go reaching to the bottle for comfort. I do not need or desire a drink every day. Now and then, like the vast majority of people in this country, I choose to relax with a drink. But unlike the vast majority of people in the country, you're an inspector in the Metropolitan Police. Now, if you're not up to the job... Oh, but I am. Fine. We'll keep this between ourselves. We won't go any further. Thank you very much, Mom. Oh, and Inspector Gold. Please don't give me another reason to be disappointed in you. I will try not to. Drinking on duty now, smoking on duty. Don't let the superintendent catch her. What's happened? 
She has just given me a right rollicking over last night's little drink. And boy, did she enjoy herself. I've never been so humiliated in all my life. What's she say? Everything that I already know. You know, letting the side down, you know, bad example, blah, 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 blah. And then she said, let's forget about it, you know, keep it between ourselves. But that's got to be a good thing, isn't it? At least you know you've heard the end of it. To buy a cup of coffee. Maybe later on, I'm going to take early refs and go for a stroll and try and calm down, all right? I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. Sarge, is the uh, inspector OK? Why wouldn't she be? I saw her rush out. She looked pretty upset. And what's that got to do with you? Just that the whole relief knows about it. The drinks in the pub last night and... Well, if you've got nothing better to do than to stand around listening to idle gossip, then maybe you're in the wrong job. We were just concerned. If I were you two, I'd be more concerned about how my career was shaping up, because from where I'm standing, it's not looking too clever. Now, do you have work to do? Sarge. So what are you standing here for? And they say crime doesn't pay. If Garrison is going solo, that's going to take some bottle to go against Larson. I'll see. He's got to be pretty well connected if he's willing to risk it. There can't be many people in Larson's fan club, but I wonder how many will actually go with Garrison. So how do you reckon he's going to keep himself in the manner to which he's become accustomed? <laughs> oh, I think he'll manage. Going by his CV, he's built up an impressive range of special skills over the years. Armed robbery, extortion, pimping, forgery. And those are just the things we caught him doing. God knows what else he's into. Garrison has the potential to be equally as bad as his old boss, if not worse. He's got to prove himself all over again now he's out on his own. OK, here we go. What do you want to do now, Sarge? Follow him? I'm not going to find anything else sitting here. I'll go in, you stay here. Is that safe? Oh, no, I really need you to come in and hold my hand. Stay here. All right. Oh, um, just an orange juice, please. No, um, young Asian guy. They've gone to the toilets. There could be some kind of deal going down here. <laughs> yeah, he's leaving now. Yeah. Make sure you get a photo of him on the way out, Zane. Okay. Another guy now. On the way out. I don't know what went on in there, but some kind of deal was struck. Didn't waste much time setting himself up in business, did he? No, he didn't. What do you reckon it is? Drugs? Dealing in pubs is a bit lowbrow, even for Garrison. Let's get the photographs printed and see what that gives us. Yeah, okay.
Thank you. So, Mr. Town has gone missing again. That's right. He, he, he just took himself off. Weren't our officers called out to you earlier today? Yeah, they found him and brought him back. Hey, is this you? World War II, Normandy. We were both out there. 1944. My granddad was killed in the Normandy landings. Same age as me when he died. That's funny. He would have been about your age now, I guess. So, do you want to tell us what happened? I had a bit of a go at him about what he'd done earlier. He wasn't too pleased about having to pay for the damage he'd done. But I said to him, you got off lucky. You could be on your way to jail by now. Gave him a bit of a ticking off then. Well, maybe I went on a bit. But I said, getting in trouble with the police, and at your age, you should be setting an example. I bet that didn't go down too well. Oh, I said, you want to get round there and apologise for having been such a nuisance. Well, we started arguing again. Next thing was, he was out the door. Ah, oh, but I'm sure he'll be back once he's calmed down. Yeah. Have you got a photo? Maybe we can give out a description, see if our officers can find him? No, I'm sorry, have you got one that's a little bit more recent? We're wasting time. We need to find him. Hey, come on now, Albert. Don't go upsetting yourself. You don't understand. That's why I rang you up. He's got a gun. Sorry, what makes you think that? Well, after he'd gone, I walked past his bedroom door and I saw this on his bed. It's where he keeps it. And what kind of gun is it? It's a Luger. That's a German Army standard sidearm. And why would he got his hands on that? It's a war trophy. He used to say he got it from a German officer he killed after a shootout. But the truth was, he fell off the back of a lorry. And did it work? Yeah, I think so. He really looked after it. He was forever cleaning it. And does it have ammunition? He's got two bullets. Albert, do you have any idea where he might be? He said he was going back home. Wanted to sort things out. That's why I got scared. Yeah, I'll get in contact with Inspector Gold. Sierra Oscar 1 from 298, over. Albert, we'll need to have John's old address. It's 20 Goddard Avenue. Sierra Oscar 1 from 298, over. She's not responding. I'll get in contact with Smithy. 54 from 298, over. Go ahead, anyone. Sarge. We've got a problem. Uh, more whiskey, please. No ice. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, black coffee, please. Mum, I've just had a report from PC Johansson and Hemingway. A man's gone missing with a gun from 12 Bridwell Lane, and apparently he's in an agitated state, so I've got SO19 on standby. Who else have you alerted? I came straight to you. Well, Inspector Gold? I haven't been able to contact her yet. Maybe I should go with him, help look for John. And I think it's better if you stay here. That way, if he does come back, you'll be here to look after him. 298 from Superintendent Prosser. What's going on? We have a 78-year-old man gone missing in possession of a handgun. His name is John Towner. Have we got any idea where this guy could be heading? Yes, he's on his way to the house where he used to live, which is the 20... Goddard Avenue. And has he taken the gun with him? Yes, that's right, and we believe he's in possession of two bullets. Mom, I don't think he's in a very good state. Apparently he was very upset and he said he was going to the house to sort things out. All right, PC Hemingway, thanks very much. We'll keep you informed. Authorise SO19. Uh, hang on. Don't you think we should talk to Inspector Gold first? She dealt with this bloke this morning. I thought you said you tried to contact her. Yeah, but then we should talk to PCs Casper and Hollis. They were there and... Th There's a man out there with a gun. You heard PC Hemingway. We don't know what he's capable of. Then we should talk to the officers who dealt with him this morning. Then we can try and get a measure of what this old bloke's really like. Fine. You do that if you want. In the meantime, I'm your commanding officer and I've given a direct order. Get me SO19. The best thing for you to do is to get back onto Chirpley High Street and then take a left onto Brooklyn's Lane. Sir, can you do a three-point turn for me now, please? Thank you very much. You two, come here. 
When I tell you to clear the streets, I mean clear the streets. You don't start giving people alternative route directions. Do you understand? Do you understand? Then get on and do it. We gained entry to the next door, but we can't hear a thing. It's total silence, and there's no actual sight in the town. Have the neighbours seen anything? One of them said that they saw an old boy matching Towner's description enter the house about an hour ago. They did say he was carrying something, but they couldn't confirm it was a gun. Well, that'll be our man, then. Any news from PC Hemingway? No, nothing. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, for once, we're going to look pretty good on the front page of their papers. Right, stand by, Sergeant. Wait for my word. Critical incident, something about John Towner running around with a gun. I heard the superintendent was on scene at a firearms incident, but I didn't know why. Then why did you come and talk to you? Or Red, you were both at the scene this morning. The last thing John Towner is SO19 breaking his door down. Albert, John wasn't at the address you gave us. But he must be. That's where he lived with Lizzie. I don't know anywhere else. He wasn't there. Can you think of anywhere else he might be? It's important. I don't want to worry you, but John could be in a lot of trouble. They won't hurt him, will they? Well, not if we can get to him first, but if he's walking around carrying a gun... It's just that he... I don't know. He gets angry with himself. He gets into these black moods. But he wouldn't harm anybody. Well, I believe you. I mean... You've known him for years, since before your army days, right? Mm. Now, is there anywhere you can think of, like his favourite place? Maybe a walk he likes, or a pub? Is there nowhere else you can think of besides Goddard Avenue? Goddard Avenue? Did I say that? I meant the house he used to live in with Lizzie. Right, OK, well, don't worry. What was it you meant to say? Bream Crescent. 73 Bream Crescent. Jeez, Mum. Mum? That was PC Hemingway. Um, they've just discovered that this was the wrong address. Yes, well, we still have an armed man on the streets. We need to find him and we need to find him quick. Can you get rid of him, please? Um, you're good half hour too late. All this for one frightened old man. We'll talk about this later. Or perhaps if you try talking to him instead of threatening him like this. I said we talk about this back at the station. Apparently he's at his old house in Bream Crescent. It's the place where he used to live with his wife. I know, I was there this morning. Or perhaps if you'd waited and tried talking to me. I've been trying to reach you on your mobile and your radio all morning, neither of which you seem that keen to answer. So forgive me if I'm not that interested in what you think right now, Inspector. I better get round now and try and sort this out. I want some of SO19 to accompany you. That won't be necessary. He's just an old man. A depressed old man with a grudge and a gun. You might be prepared to risk it, but I'm not willing to be responsible for you coming back in a body bag. Have you got that? Mom. John? 
John? Do you remember me from earlier? I was with you and your mate Albert. Gina. Gina Gold. Do you mind if I join you? Uh, would you mind? I'm a bit nervous around those things. Right, what are you doing back here then? I just had to get out of the house. I had enough moaning from Albert to last me a lifetime. He's ten times worse than the missus ever was. He's worried about you. <laughs> I'm worried about me. I don't know how I got here. No, I can't remember coming. Eh? Just thought I'd be happier here, but I'm not. Well. You did live here a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was years ago, but you know, sometimes it just feels like yesterday. Me and Lizzie just starting out. Whole lives ahead of us. Now, It's all gone. There's no one. Look, I keep, I keep hoping things will get better, but they won't, will they? Hey, no, 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 no. No, you'd, you've no idea what it is to like to be on your own, to face everything on your own. Don't I? I work with about 200 people. There's not one of them I would really talk to. Or maybe one. Just like you and Albert, eh? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Well, he's a good mate. He cares about you. Uh, for how long? How, how much more of this can he take? How much more of me can he take? Uh, I'm... I'm so scared. If you tried telling him how you're feeling, he could help. No, no he's... He, he, he doesn't care about me. We fight non-stop. Yeah, he fights because he cares. Now, good mates are hard to find. If he wants to help you, let him. Don't choose to be alone, John. Look, I was very ill recently, and I decided to do it all on my own, you know, stiff upper lip. Kept it all to myself. Uh, uh, uh. Never even told your husband. Uh -huh. Well, I would have done if I had one, but there's not a man alive who could put up with me. But there's one bloke who did know, he wanted to help, and, and I wouldn't let him. Pushed him away. Which hurt both of us. And by the time I was ready to trust him, it was too late, he'd gone off with somebody else. I don't want you to make the same mistake. No. I fought a war, and that terrified me, but this, this, this is so much worse, because... I don't know if I've got any fight left in me. Come on. Who are you trying to kid? You got plenty of that left. Plenty. Come on. I'm gonna get you out of here. Come on. Catch you later, yeah? Right? Yeah. I've got to take my hat off to Amber. She was all right with that old bloke back there. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, you know what she's normally like. But she did really good. Better face the press, I suppose. Yeah, you better right. Look, I saw the way you spoke to PC's Powell and Kapoor earlier. They might not be able to stand up to your sniping, but I most certainly can. Well, excuse me, Mum. No, excuse me, Sergeant Smith. I don't know what your problem is, but the sooner you sort it out, the better. Okay, 
This is the guy that we saw at the pub. His name's Dida Hussein. Got any form? Yep, armed robbery. He served three years and got out six months ago. So what's his connection to Garrison? Well, I spoke to Hussein's probation officer. Apparently he's landed himself a job as a foreman at a factory on the Heathfield Industrial Estate. That place is as clean as a whistle. It was, until recently. This guy, Paul Douglas, he bought out the business last year. So you got any previous? Just a bit. He used to own the sweatshop on the Bagford Road. We raided that place a couple of years ago. There must have been 80 or so workers, illegal immigrants, every single one of them. If he's got a new factory on the go, he's going to need to get his hands on all the cheap labour that he can. He doesn't want anything interfering with his profit margins, does he? Are you saying he's smuggling illegal immigrants again? I wouldn't put it past him. And if he is, he's going to need fake passports to get them in and false papers to keep them here. It was only a couple of weeks ago we closed down Larson's forgery factory, so Garrison is going to know there's a gap in the market. Exactly. Get your coat. Louise? Yeah, it's me. I know I said I wouldn't call, but... Would it be all right if I came and saw you? Mr. Garrison. You got the wrong man, mate. A friend of mine said you might be able to help. Sorry. You got the wrong man, mate. I don't help no one. Dida Hussein said you did. I've got a lot of work his way. It's returning the favour. And what's your name? Diwale. Armand Diwale. If you're that great mate, so how comes I've never heard of you? Well, there's no need. I'm no one. I've heard of you. So Dida tells you where I'll be when I'll be there and doesn't think to mention it to me, I think he'd know better. I guess he thinks it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, well, it is. Listen, why don't you give Dida a call? Sit down. OK, what is it you want? There's a scale I know. The visa runs out in a month. I'm enjoying her company, if you know what I mean. I need a passport for her, quick. Thanks for seeing me. Just say what you've got to say and go. What would you say if I told you that I've made a terrible mistake? Besides, too right you have, you mean? I'd say that you treated me like dirt. And I'm surprised you had the cheek to even phone me, never mind turn up on my doorstep. You knew the risks I was taking being with you, and when the pressure came on, you dropped me. And that hurt. You hurt me. I know, Louise, look, and I'm sorry. Well, you said what you had to say. I've really missed you. And I haven't stopped thinking about you. Since we split, I don't know, I just... I've been walking around in the days. I know you're angry and you've got every right to be. I should never have treated you like that. You deserve better. A lot better. And I blew it. And I'm going to regret that for the rest of my life. I'm sorry. Right, 500 quid gets us the passport, then we can nick Garrison and get him to help us nail Larson. Perfect. The debrief from SO19, they felt there were some pretty fundamental mistakes made. Some of which might have been avoided if I'd managed to contact you. Yeah, well, I was on my refs, that's why you couldn't reach me, but if you'd spoken to PC Hollis and PC Casper, they were with John Tyner this morning. Yes, but at the time... I was the one with my neck on the line, and I had to act with the information that I had available. I understand that. 
But if you had spoken to them, all this could have been avoided. Well, I made some mistakes. What more can I say? Well, I'm hardly in a position to criticise, am I? Well, the report from SO19 says you handled the situation very well. Well done. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry about what happened. I think it's best if we draw a line under the last few days, don't you, Mum? Well, I've got to go and see the Borough Commander. I've got some explaining to do. Right. Isn't this the bit where you leave and I never see you again? I never wanted to stop seeing you. You do know that, don't you? <sighs> well, I just didn't realise what we were dealing with. Or who we were dealing with. When I saw what your old man did to that lad, well, he cut his fingers off. It totally freaked me out. So what changed your mind? It's not as if Pete's had a change of heart. He's as bad now as he's ever been. I didn't want to put you at risk. I thought of you getting hurt because of your involvement with me. I'd be more worried about what he'd do to you. That I could cope with. But if he ever hurt you... I can look after myself. Just don't take any more risks than we need to and we'll be fine. But if you're going to keep on bailing out on me every time it gets a bit rough, then you should go now. It's going to take a bigger man than Pete Larson to rattle me. Stay calm and follow me lead, all right? He'll kill me. He'll kill us both. <sighs> Just follow me lead. You ready? Yeah. All right. Come on in. Yeah, everything seems fine, madam. What's going on? What's the matter? I'm Sergeant Smith from Sunhill. Your wife thought she heard some noises. She gave us a call. We've checked the place out and everything's fine. Yeah, I thought there was someone in the house. Hey, why didn't you call me? Well, you could have been anywhere. He's got a couple of mobile phones, but he never has either of them switched on. Yeah. Well, it's all clear now, so um, I'll be on my way. Sorry to have wasted your time, officer. No, it's what we're here for. Listen, thanks. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, sir. Mrs. Larson, if I can be of any more help. Mr. Larson. Hey. This is Carl. He's punctual. If I was on the same hourly rate as him, so would I be. That's the third time you've checked that since we left the station. You go in, you buy a passport, and we arrest him. Then his lawyers step in, and that's when the real fun begins. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, pardon me, Michael, please. Yeah, have you seen him leave? No one's left. All right, I'm going to check his car.
Oh, Gina. Um, I, I just want to say I'm sorry for grasping up to the superintendent about taking the relief for a drink the other night. She seemed to suss it somehow, and once she started asking me the whys and the wherefores, I didn't know. It's okay. I'm sure she didn't give you much choice. Well, anyway, I, I am sorry. I hope it didn't get you into too much trouble. No, don't worry. It's water under the bridge now. Oh, and where have you been for the past hour? Well, you're not the only one that can use the old I'm on refs executioner. How'd it go with the uh, super? Well, surprisingly well. Not only did I get an apology, but also a well done. Oh, blimey. I was expecting blood and guts. Well, I'd be on standby with a mop and bucket because she has an interview with the borough commander. Ooh. Spoken with MIT. All he had on him was a box of false passports and a couple of hundred quid. Have they checked the CCTV? It's broken. Of course it is. How convenient. Larson always knows how to cover his tracks. We don't know he's behind this yet. Oh, come on, Sarge. Larson isn't his only enemy. Garrison has a falling out with Larson, sets up on his own and then gets a bullet in the head. There's no way Larson isn't behind this. So now what? It's in the hands of MIT. There's nothing more we can do. Well, if that's how it's got to be, then that's how it's got to be. I'll still be here when you get back. But just take care, all right? Look, I've got to go. Yeah, you too. Have you got a minute? Yeah, what do you want? Vince Garrison. What? He's fallen out with Larson and set up on his own. Only half an hour ago, I found him shot dead in the back seat of his car. And you think Larson did it? So what's that got to do with me? Well, I just wondered what the score was with you and Louise. Oh, I see. Come on, Smithy. You've got to help me out here. I've got nothing. I've just heard that the Larsons are going on an extended holiday. So they're not going to be around for quite a while. So it looks like your lead just got a little bit colder. Yeah. OK, thanks a lot. Hi. I've got to go and see the Barrow Commander. Offer you a pat on the back. Mm. You have to pay to talk to me soon. It's been quite an eventful day. Yes, sir. A catalogue of disaster. One badly managed incident after the next. What are your thoughts on today's events? Things happen, sir. Yeah, but they shouldn't. No, they shouldn't, but they do. Which is surprising given the experience of the officer in charge. SO19 were called today for a 78-year-old man who, according to your report, presented little or no danger. That's right, sir. They were sent to the wrong house, where an elderly couple live. An elderly couple who have now been interviewed by every local newspaper have now decided to submit a complaint against us. Sir. Officers have tried and failed to contact you on several occasions, Inspector Gold. Where were you? As I explained to the superintendent, I was taking my ref. Where? You weren't in the canteen. This building has been searched from top to bottom. Where were you? Forgive me, sir, but what has this got to do with today's events? You're the officer in charge. I need to know where you were and why this happened. I went to a pub. <laughs> pub? Superintendent Prosser found a bottle of whiskey in your office. I believe she's already spoken to you regarding your drink problem. I do not have a drink problem. You're caught drinking with four junior officers in uniform on duty. And we've talked about that, as I've tried to explain. And Bond Street officers were called to a restaurant recently to control some drunken customers, one of whom was you. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. And today, an incident happened that I can only describe as a, a shambles. But you spent your refs in a pub. And you still insist you don't have a drink problem. I can't afford to have a repeat of what happened today. With all due respect, sir, that is hardly likely. Oh, I agree, Inspector. I agree. Because you're suspended from duty with immediate effect pending an inquiry. Thank you. 
next time on The Bill. If it wasn't for you and your friends, I'd still have a job. The only thing I'm guilty of is falling in love with a sick, evil man. You see, this is Prosser's fault just as much as it is Gina's. It'll only be a matter of time before they come looking for you. Why are you doing this to me? 